Hey everyone, welcome back to another video of Salesforce Makes Sense. This is Himanshu and we'll continue our understanding use cases or rather understanding Apex with some simple plain basic use cases. All right, we started off with creating a password attempts method and the second use case is the attendance report. Let's take a look at the use case. Write a method that displays a log of the number of days you learned something new from Salesforce Makes Sense. All right. So the answer is very straightforward, but we want to do it via Apex. So what I'll do is I'll create a new method. I'll say public static. See, the key things that you need to understand when you're creating the method is first of all, you need to have the right name. So what are you doing here? You are trying to display the log of the number of days you learn something new. So what should be the name of the method? Let me write it that way. So check new learnings. All right, let's say this is a relevant name. Now, should this be public or private? Yes, I want it to be public because I want people to call it from somewhere. All right, I'll create a static method. That's okay. I don't have to keep it non-static, fine. Is there a return type? Yes, there's a return type. What do I want to see? I want to see the log of the number of days. So if, if I can either say that this could be an integer, correct? Why would this be an integer? I want to see the count of the number of days that someone learned something from my channel, right? So how many days are there in a week? 17, right? I'm kidding. Seven days. So seven days, 24 hours per day. So out of seven days, how many days did you actually learn something from the channel or something from this, from the tutorials is what I'm wanting to log as part of the result of this method. So it can be a number, correct? So I've kept integer. So it could be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, anything, correct? So your method syntax is set up. Let's say save. So if you are able to do it yourself, pause the video here and go ahead and proceed or else continue with me, right? We are getting an error. Why? Because this is an integer type. I need to return something. So I'll just return. I'll put a return statement so that I'm able to save the file for now. Okay. Let's try to save it. So this saved up fine. All right. Now I can approach this in different ways. So don't think that, you know, uh, there's only one way of doing it, but just, just based on, you know, what we are trying to achieve, we'll just try to see what we have learned and try to make sense of it. Okay. So I want to display a log of the number of days I've learned something new from the channel. Now, what is the user input would, that you would need to understand whether they have learned something or not? Can I, let's say, create a map. I'm just thinking out loud here. Okay. So I'll create a map that will hold information like this. So let's say Monday. Yes. Tuesday. No. So you can create a map of key value pairs wherein you will store everything, all of the names of your uh, uh, weekdays, Monday, till Sunday and you can store either yes or no in string or you can say true or false. Right? So basically true means that you learned something new. False means you did not learn something new from that particular day. Right? So if I have this kind of data and I iterate over it and then I find out whichever records are true and I just do a count of it. Will that tell me the number of, will that give me the log of the number of days you learned something? Yes. Right. So that's one way of doing it, which we'll go through. Another way could be, let's say you want to keep the days of the week like this one. True. Right. You can say two. True. So meaning Monday would be one, Tuesday would be two. So that's all, that's based on your understanding. So what would that be basically mean? You're creating a map. However, you're choosing the kind of data type you want to store. The previous one would have been a string comma Boolean type of map. Correct. This one would be a integer comma Boolean kind of map. All right. So I would be expecting this input coming to this method. So what would be the input type? It would be map of string comma Boolean. So I'll be expecting that for each day you'll tell me either true or false. Okay. So I'll say week log. Let's say that's the name of the map variable. All right. Now what I need to do, I need to take a look at the map variable. Iterate 
over the keys check if the value is true if so increment a counter by one finally return the counter value after the iteration or the loop is completed in english this makes sense makes sense right this is what we need to do essentially how do we do it right so we need to take a look at the map variable and iterate over it so how can i iterate i can use the for loop correct now what do i want to iterate on i want to iterate on each day of the week which is the key of my map variable so i'll say for each string in week log dot key set if you are someone who took a look at my videos understood maps as collections understood how this for loop is written you should be good here without any problems if you're not take a step back take a look at the for loop video again take a look at the maps video again come back all right so this is how you write a for loop and you will iterate over the key set what does this mean this means it will iterate starting with monday tuesday wednesday thursday it will go inside this condition this set of statements every time until you reach sunday that's the meaning of the for loop correct now you have each weekday what do you want the value corresponding to that key correct so how do you get the value corresponding to that key you can say week log dot get weekday what will this give this will give you a boolean value correct it will either give you true or false how quickly i'll explain you what is week log week log is the entire map variable which is holding this monday comma true tuesday comma false and what is weekday it is the iteration so let's say you start with monday right monday so you will say week log dot get whatever is in monday so for monday you might, might have put either true or false so this will evaluate to either true or false okay so i can assign it to a boolean variable i'll call it current day status let's try to save it first of all and see if it saves up fine or not so it saves up fine do you want to see why is this working fine if i try to say let's say it will return a string and i try to save it it will be it will be failing it will not let me save it because this is supposed to return the value the value is of type boolean so this should also be boolean because again strongly typed apex is strongly typed all right illegal assignment from boolean to string from boolean to string so you have to ensure the right kind of data type is chosen okay i'll call it current day status now what do i want to do i want to see if the value is true then i will use an incremental i'll use a increment i'll say i'll use a counter so i'll say integer number of days i learned something new very long variable but that's okay i'll initialize this variable to zero because i want to take a look at that at my map variables and then increment it but by default it will stay zero correct because i don't know yet how ma how many days have i learned per week now this is the variable i want to increment when will i increment this i'll only increment this when current day status is equal to true so i'll say if current day status equal to equal to true now what is the short code of writing this i don't need the equal to equal to why because boolean is already true or false so this will evaluate to true if the value is true here make sense perfect so if current day status is true i'll simply say number of days i learned something equal to plus 1 so i'll increment it by plus 1 plus plus okay else i'll not do anything i just have to increment it if i found any day that is true that has the value mentioned as true all right now once this if condition runs once it runs for the entire monday till sunday it will reach this line here which means it would have executed and completed the for loop which means it would have looked to all the days of the week and stored the counter variable the final counter variable so what i can do is i can return the final counter variable instead of this static integer so i can simply say whatever is the number of days i learned return it from here and i'll say save why will this save up fine because i'm returning a integer type and this variable is also a integer type 
all right let's get rid of all the extra comments to reduce the code number of lines and try to save it one more time okay and if you notice i'm keeping everything indexed i'm keeping everything oriented uh, spacing all the uh, best practices of writing the names uh, in the right cases assignments everything is fine okay so try to write this on your own if you're trying to do it on, on your own or try to write it with me the way i'm writing it make mistakes right now it's okay let's not make, make mistakes later okay all right now it's the time to test it out so what i'll do is i need to call this method basic use cases in apex dot check new learnings all right i cannot hit it directly why because i need a variable to pass it as a parameter so i need to create this variable because i need to give this feed this data right so i'll create this variable how do i create a variable i have to instantiate it so i'll instantiate this particular variable which is of type map and how to add values to it by using the put method so i'll put it seven times okay let's put seven times or rather let's put six times sunday is off okay sunday is a break day so i'll say monday comma this should be true all right tuesday i was again very sincere true wednesday i felt i had some other work thursday i thought yeah let's continue learning new videos are coming very frequently friday i was completely in friday mood and saturday i took extra time to learn new stuff so again true so you have six items or six elements or six rows inserted in your map okay so week log is a set of six days sunday considering off okay so that would be false by default so your code will iterate over monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday check whichever is true and increment it so based on this values what should be the count that should come how many days did you learn something new one two three four correct let's check whether our analysis of the calculation is same as what salesforce is doing based on our method let's say execute i think we have not debugged it right i have to debug it to check it so i'll assign this to an integer variable final answer and i'll debug it the reason i'm using debug return statements instead of debug is so that you actually are able to understand return statements all right because in actual use cases you'll not be putting debug statements you'll be returning the value to your front end you'll returning you'll be returning the value to your lwc to your triggers so it's better to write the return statement so let's see now what is the final answer execute the log is generated let's close the previous log let's see the value is 4 all right let's make a tweak you were super busy the entire week you did not do any any new learnings what should be the value now it should be zero because none of your map keys have a value as true so it will not increment the value at all it will stay zero which is the initialization where is our initialization right here okay if you notice i did not assign it as public not needed why because i'm using it in my local method why do i need to give it public and all of that stuff nothing needed just plain declaration data type and variable name and i assigned it a value zero because i need to initialize it with something and then it can increment to one two three whatever is required all right i did not declare it static what happens if i declare it static let's save it static is not allowed in locals you're not allowed to keep a static variable here static variables can only be class variables again i hope if, if you if you read if you understood the class variables uh, and data types uh, tutorial properly we already saw this error correct one more thing why did i declare this variable here on the top so imanshu what happens if i declare this inside my for loop somewhere here what if i do this what happens let's save it and let's quickly take a look so let's say i was active on wednesday and fridays what should be the number of days i learned something new two days because there are two true flags correct let's try to execute it okay i think i have not been able to save the file so let's simply say 
I'll just put it out here and I'll assign the value of zero inside the for loop. Okay, I'm just wanting to show you something. Okay, now it has saved up fine. I've just declared the variable here and I have assigned it a value of zero inside my for loop. Let's say I want to inside assign it zero and for each status that I get, I'm just incrementing it by one. Now pause the video here and maybe just think through and just tell me if you think something is wrong and if something is wrong, what is the issue? What could be the issue? Okay. And for those of you who want to see what happened, if we try to now execute for Wednesday and Friday, what is the number of days I learned something new? Two days. Correct. So let's try to execute and see what answer comes. So if I take a log at, look at the debug log, it says zero which means two has not come up. Our method is failing. What's the reason? The problem is that inside my iteration, I'm always assigning the value as zero. So the code starts. It starts with Monday. It sees, okay, it is false. It comes inside. It sets the variable to zero. It goes in here, checks. What is the log value? It is false. Okay, I'll not increment it. All right, Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday also false. Don't, don't increment it. Fine. It will stay zero. Wednesday, I actually did something on Wednesday. So it will come here for Wednesday. It will assign the variable value to zero. It will come here and check for Wednesday. What did you do? Yes, I did learn something new. It will come here for Wednesday. It will increment the value to one, right? Now it will go back for Thursday. Thursday, it will come here. See the same value that you incremented to one will be reinitialized to zero or rather reset to zero, which is why the increments that you are doing here is not making sense. So this initialization has to be outside the for loop or else you'll keep overriding the value that's coming as part of your loop iterations. Now, does that make sense? If it does not, just try to go through this slowly and just try to listen to what I said probably two or three times if it is not making sense. Okay, listen to it probably two to three times and you'll make sense of it. All right, which is why it is important to assign your variable outside the for loop because it needs to be initialized set outside and then do all your calculation increment decrements inside the for loop and return the final result. If you reset it every time within the loop, then it will always be reset whatever you do. All right, so that's the reason why it is outside. Perfect. That was our use case. Thank <music> you.